Welcome back to Bread and Butter, everybody, where we are serving up the basics for Hearthstone improvement. I am your host, Doc McButton, and as always, I am joined by Tito Sanana. Hello. And this week, his name may be small, but he is mighty. Ant. Ant, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being on. So what uh, what have you been doing in Hearthstone recently? Um, I mean, mostly just streaming. Yeah, I've just been, you know, playing... I really love Mage. Mage has been like my favorite class, like the past like few expansions, I feel like. So I've just been jamming a lot of Mage decks. So, well, I mean, there's like really only one now, but yeah, yeah I, I just have been having a lot of fun with. Nice. Uh, Tito, how about yourself? I have been struggling from D5 to Legend. I have been going up and down and up and down and up and mm-hmm. down. I've been trying all the decks. Um, I decided that I'm going to try to join the crowd and play the shaman deck and that took me a few losses to figure out and now i'm kind of in a place where i'm probably playing at about 50 percent, but it definitely took a few games to get there i think it's um a very fun and interesting deck but man does it suck to lose to when you have a nice board Mm -hmm. you have full health they have nothing going and then it's just (laughs) pew 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 and you're dead (laughs) so um as much as i'm enjoying playing the deck i hope they nuke it from orbit (laughs) <laughs> uh, but I've been playing every. I've been um, THL starts up this week, as yep. you know, Doc, because you have joined the pro league. Um, and I'm I'm prepping decks and trying to figure out what to play. I'm going to play this week on Wednesday. How about yourself? What have you been doing in Hearthstone? Yeah, so I've uh, I've given up on uh, Big Shaman. Uh, it was fun <laughs> for a while, but it just can't it can't get there uh, as consistently as I needed to. Uh, I switched over to Shockspitter Hunter. It's basically the same deck, just the spells do a little bit more damage now. Um, Then I switched over to Drum Circle Druid, and that deck is just disgusting for any mid-range aggro player, because it just, it has way too much gas for an aggro deck, it feels like to me. Like, I I went into, like, the, like, teens of turns against a DK and just was able to generate enough value to take care of a Blood DK that I didn't feel like an aggro deck should really be able to have life gain and like removal that they have. But that deck just has so much, so many resources at their disposal that uh, you can kind of just get there if you don't give up on the game. Uh, But yeah, that's basically, I've basically just been playing a lot of drum circle. But the nice part about that is even if it may have a lot of gas as an aggro deck, a lot of decks can just go over the top of it, like the Shaman, like the Mage, and and you can get these big boards of 6, 12, Taunt, Treants, and say, <laughs> what you got for me, son? I have 30 health, and then you have zero health, and you're moving on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, man, what have you been doing outside of Hearthstone? Um, I watch a lot of anime. <laughs> That's, like, the, the main thing that I do. What's the, what's the mm-hmm. one you're watching right now? Uh, I actually started One Piece today. So I'm, oh, nice. I want to walk all of One Piece. Yeah, that's kind of the thing. So I did a, early, a stream earlier where like I just did my, my walk and then you know I was playing in a Discord and watching that. So I started One Piece today. Um, I did my rewatch of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood like this past week as well. Um, I'm probably going to... I have like four episodes left of uh, my love story that I'm probably going to finish after this. So I have a few that I've, I've been watching. But yeah, One, one Piece is the big one that's going to take me a while, but... You know, I feel like it's interesting because I wanted to do it while walking. So I can say that I've walked all of One Piece. <laughs> well, uh, from what I understand, that is a lot. And maybe we should schedule you to revisit the podcast in 2025. And we can go over <laughs> how you like the show. So, yeah. So I've been doing like just walking and watching anime for like probably a year and a half. And the amount of anime I've watched has totaled to like 180 hours. But One Piece is 420 hours. <laughs> so it took me a, one, a year and a half to do the 180 so i'm doing a little bit more now so i'm not like you know gonna watch it for the next three years um yeah it, it's gonna it's a big commitment but it's something i really want to do i've never got into anime mm-hmm. like i have like i'm sure i would like it and i ever did my anime experience was when i was a kid and there were these shows called um force five and star blazers and and that mm. was anime in the early '80s, and and they were only in certain areas of America that they were broadcast. But uh, those that know know, and it, 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 those were fantastic shows. And but man, I I just never found an entry point for uh, the anime, and I probably should. But then I, I I've already have enough TV where I haven't caught up on. I can't imagine just starting <laughs> up on some anime and then not catching up on those either. 
Yeah, I can always give you a recommendation if you need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some cool ones coming up, like solo leveling's coming out in January. Mm-hmm. Kaiju number eight's coming out later in the spring. There's some there's some cool stuff coming down the anime anime pipeline right now. Um, yeah. but you want to start at the beginning of something, right? You want to start at the very beginning, and and it's just like I don't want to jump in, and I don't want to, and everything seems like I don't know. So the thing about <laughs> it is being fresh. There's so much, like so many years of like history of things that you could watch. So I've only been watching for like three years. So you have you get to watch like classic after classic after classic, which is you know some of these things are pe- the best pieces of media that I've ever seen. So like you know it's always you know fine to start there's always you know going to be time to start yeah. or not time to start but you know it's never too late to start is what i'm trying to say yeah and Ant mentioned it earlier full metal alchemist brotherhood is yep. like one of the best animes of all time mm-hmm. episode three makes you feel awkward and sad for a minute but <laughs> <laughs> it's poor but but yeah it's, it's a great yeah. show it's a great yeah, it's, show it, it is uh yeah it, it, it honestly you would think that it would it would be less impactful the second time but it actually is more impactful the second time because you know what's happening you're like oh my god no (laughs) not this so i watched like growing up i watched full metal alchemist on adult swim like Mm -hmm. every weekend when a new episode would come out and then once brotherhood came out like i decided to watch it I like I knew that Brotherhood was Full Metal Alchemist without like all the filler. I was not expecting that episode to be that early on yeah. <laughs> into the season, yeah, or so into I, the show, and so it just wrecked me. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Like I watched the first series as well, and I was just not expecting like how fast things come at you with that one because like some mm-hmm. of the most like impactful series like episodes aren't to like twenty to twenty five, like thirty, something like that, and you get it like in ten. Like, oh my God, they, they put all of this into this and man, it, it, it's crazy. But yeah, that's probably my second favorite anime of all time. If I ever start with anime, I might start with Evangelican, I think, or however you oh, say it. Evangelion? Um, that's a good Evangelion, one, Evangelion, yeah. because one of, I because I, I listened to a show called um, uh, Great Night and one of the hosts on the show is one of the voices. He's a voice actor oh, in a wow. lot of anime and he's, he's a voice in Evangelican. So... I figured that'd be a good start because then I could like, you know, hear his voice yeah. in there and all that. That's a classic right there. That's a good. Yeah, that's a classic one to go to as well. Mm-hmm. Like I hear it gets confusing between like seasons and movies and, and stuff, but we'll we'll figure uh-huh. it out at some point. <laughs> Maybe I have to make that homework to watch some. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, some there you go. Anime. But but Doc, what have you been doing outside of Hearthstone? Uh, yeah. So outside of Hearthstone, uh, my girlfriend and I yesterday, we went on a uh, six mile hike in uh, a conservation area in our in our in our general area in southern utah and uh, we went and saw some petroglyphs up on the side of a on a cliff um my my girlfriend likes heights way more than i do so she and she's done this hike several times but she went up right to them i was not comfortable with how little space there was to walk so like i was probably back like 20 feet and looked at the petroglyphs because it wasn't a big path uh and then we found we found a stream that we didn't know existed uh, and being out in the desert, like finding like fast running streams is kind of cool. And so we tried we have discovered where we want to hike next, which is to try to find like where that stream comes from. But we found some cool rocks. Uh, I ended up finding a geode on the ground that was oh wow. it wasn't broke open yet, but I saw like the hole. And so then I took it home thinking that it would be a geode and I cracked it open. And fortunately, it was. Um, but, yeah, just spending some time outdoors, just hiked six miles and found some a few more trails that we want to do. Mm-hmm. What have you been doing uh, outside of Hearthstone, Tito? Well, if there's a stream that you want to find that you haven't seen yet, I suggest Ant underscore HS. <laughs> you'll find some great yeah. content there. Um, <laughs> Doc, before I get to me, have you ever thought about maybe taking a longer hike and maybe doing like part of the Appalachian Trail or something like that with your uh, partner? Um. That would be a lot of training, my guy. Like that's <laughs> that's the stuff you have to work up to. Um, I think the longest hike we've done was like thirteen miles round trip, uh, which I mean that's like an eight out, six to eight hour experience. Um, but I mean, I I would be down. It's just it's just a lot of training we'd have to do to build up to being able to do something like that and do long through hikes. 
a friend of mine has done the entire Appalachian Trail, I think, or most of it, 90%. I, I think it's all of it, but he's done it in chunks. So he has he didn't just start at the beginning and do the whole thing. He would do this section and this section and this section when he had time off from work. Uh, one time I had to drop him off near the Canadian border to um, do that section of the, the trails, and I got pulled over by border security asking what the hell I was doing out there. Um, <laughs> I was driving a Toy- uh, um, uh, Acura Integra up in you know the mountains, so they're like, what are you doing out here? But um, to answer your question, what have I been doing outside the game? Um, not a whole lot. I've been really busy. Uh, my wife's going on a, a little vacation this week to see a friend in, in the Carolinas. So that's going to be interesting this week. Outside of that, I was on the Born to be Wild podcast this week, which was a lot of fun. They invited me on, Electric Sheep City. Thank you so much for the invite. Those boys are a lot of fun. It was, it was, it was an interesting uh, conversation. We talked movies. I highly suggest you go check them out. And um, that's about it. But Doc... I think we talked enough about you and me. Why don't we um, get to know our guests a little better? Yeah, I think that's a fantastic idea. So, Ant, what guard, what got you started in video games, and then how did you find Hearthstone? Um, in video games, I mean, ever since I was little, I've played video games, I would say. Uh, I want to say, like, what was my first console? Probably, like, Sega Genesis or something like that. Um, Nintendo 64, that kind of stuff. Um, nice. I feel like I was a console, like, gamer for a really long time until like i was probably in college and then i remember like these guys in the student lounge would always play league of legends in the student lounge which was really weird because they would have the, like ten thousand ping which is unplayable but they would do it every day and they know exactly what was going to happen but they did it anyway <laughs> but yeah and then that's when like i got a laptop and got into that and then um i actually like got into hearthstone because i've played a lot of magic and uh, I just like wanted it like online, you know, more convenient because like Magic, I have to go yeah. to my local game store, you know, play there. And I mean, Hearthstone was, you know, that basically just online. But so I was playing Magic for a long time, and then Hearthstone came out, and I didn't really like it because the popular format at the time when it came out in 2014 was Arena. And then if you compare like limited formats from like Magic to Arena, it's like Ugh. my for me it's like miles better to play um like MTG draft. But yeah, yeah, so I was just like, yeah, I don't know, I don't I'm not gonna play this game. I'm not like into it. But yeah, one of my friends would come in like on his iPad and play games of Hearthstone but constructed. And I was like, that looks kind of fun. All right, let me let me give this another try. And then yeah, he sent me the deck that he was playing, and then I played that, you know, up the ranks. And then I got stuck. And then, yeah, I started looking for other decks and that kind of stuff. It's funny because, like, this is 2014. And I was like, oh, what's another deck I'd play? He's like, oh, everyone's playing this cool Miracle Rogue deck. And he's like, but <laughs> there's, like, Leroy version and a Malagos version. He's like, but the Malagos version, Malagos version looks a lot better. And it was just way worse than the Leroy version. <laughs> so I spent all my dust, like, you know, making a Malagos. And then I'd put a deck. And I'm like, yeah, it just doesn't feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny you say the uh, people the people were playing League of Legends in the uh, student center. When I was deployed in 04, there were pe- we had like a 56k connection for the entire base, and there were people playing EverQuest like in the <laughs> MWR tent with what limited bandwidth they had, and I'm sure it sucked, but they did what they could. You get you you want to play a game, you want to play a game. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. At what point did uh, did you decide to get into competitive Hearthstone, or did you just kind of naturally flow into that? Um, I mean, I guess I feel like I naturally flowed into it just because, like, so my first like few seasons playing, um, I want to say I got Legend in the first season, if I don't remember. Um, but I remember the first time I got Legend, I entered at like seventy or something like that. Oh, I was like, oh, that's cool, and then I was like, I don't really understand what these things mean. I'm just gonna keep playing, and then I kept playing, and then I'd get higher and higher. And I was like. Wait, what was? Because I remember hearing about like the you know the qualification type of stuff, and that back then you had to get top sixteen in a month. I was like, I got up to like twenty or something. I was like, wait, what do I need to get to again? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I tried that first month that I got legend, and um, I fell short. I remember I was like in top one hundred like all day, and then I fell all the way to like rank one thousand, and then I climbed all the way back to like top one hundred, but I just didn't get to the sixteen. Um, yeah, and then the following month. I was like, okay, I'm going to try, I'll sort of try it again. Um, the, the goal that I actually had was 
I wanted to get Golden Shaman because the first month I had a Golden Warlock because I was playing a lot of Zoo. So I wanted to play Golden Shaman. And it was like a, probably an underrated deck, though it wasn't like the best because I had a really bad matchup against like Miracle Rogue. But yeah, so I was like, I'm just going to play Shaman. And then I got to Legend and then I got to like top 100 and I would just log on, play like three games, win them, and then log off. And then I did that up to like top 16. And then, yeah, I just ended up getting top 16. And then I played like the tournament that it qualified, qualified G4. Um, I think it was called like America's Championship, like phase one. And then I got through that, went to phase two. And then that's where, like, I guess that kind of like ended. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I felt like first, like, oh, I was like, oh, okay, this is something that I can do. Cause like the phase two was in New York. So I got to fly to New York and I was like, wow, that's. <laughs> that's insane that i get to do that for this game that i've been playing online that's pretty cool so with uh with the new hearthstone esports ecosystem are you interested in trying in that at all or are you gonna wait and hope until we get something better um i would just hope for something better like it just seems like way too much of a grind right now um because like the master tours are only like 16 people or something like that i don't know and it's just like a lot of work because i remember even back like when the the old system where you had to get like certain finishes you just have to like dedicate like, you know, five days out from the end of the season. And you're like, okay, I'm only going to play Hearthstone for these five days. And then like towards the end, if you're not close to your desired rank, then you're just like, okay, well, I can't sleep. I have to keep going. I can't, you know, I can't do this. You know, I have to you know, order some food and like not cook myself because I have to, you know, keep doing this. So yeah, it ends up just being a really big grind. It's not something I'm like into right now. But if you do it right, you only have to do it once in the first <laughs> first iteration, and then you win, and then you don't have to do it again because you qualified, and then you just you know win worlds and you're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. That's simple, right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I mean, when you put it that way, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> How did you find your way into streaming, and do you make any other content besides Hearthstone content? Okay, so yeah, I found my way into streaming like again back in like 2014. Um, kind of like when Hearthstone came out, um, that season where I qualified for, um, you know, the the championship like phase tournament or whatever, um, is the like I was like told myself if I finish you know high rank with Shaman this month, like I'm gonna start streaming Shaman just because like not a lot of people were doing it at the time, so I thought I would be like unique. So that's kind of like where I started. Like the next month, I was like, okay, I'm gonna start streaming now, um, and that's what I did. Like I. I just had like my laptop in this room and then I had just like these weird, like, I don't know what they were, they were, they were, they were just really uncomfortable chairs and I sat there and I remember like watching all the streams back then, like 2014, I was like, yeah, this is, I can do this. this is easy. And then I remember like, oh, streaming and being like, oh, I'm tired. And then look down and be like, oh, I've only been streaming for like two hours. <laughs> yeah. So that's when I started like back in like 2014, um, or non hearthstone content i guess i recently started doing like the the anime stuff so i kind of just like i wanted to try to get more familiar with like the tiktok platform and i was like i want to add time to the end of my walks so i'm just gonna like watch the anime and then like you know any like thoughts that i have about the anime or maybe even any random thoughts that i have i'm just gonna talk about it um nice while i'm doing like the while i'm walking and yeah i've just been doing that it's not like super serious i'm not you know I, I'm more trying to familiarize myself with like the platform than anything. Um, but yeah, it's one of fun that's been like fun to do. It's just like watch a bunch of anime, walk, and then try to, you know, feel more healthy and then um yeah, just give my like thoughts on it and stuff and connect with people on, you know, different anime, I guess. So you but before we get into the next thing, you do you do you make any YouTubes or anything like that? And the other question I had is uh, when I know you made a, a few masters tours, can you talk about that experience? Okay. Um, wait, what was the first question again? The first question was, do you make any like YouTube content oh, okay, or okay. outside outside for Hearthstone or anything outside of just your streaming? Um, no, it's just my streaming. Like I should do YouTube. It's just like, I feel like it's a lot of work, even though it might not be, I'm not sure. And it's like super important to do, but it's just like, I don't know. I've just not been feeling like doing it, I guess. <laughs> it's just a, a serious answer, but you know, it's something I could see myself doing at some point. It's just like, I have to learn the skill of like editing and doing all that kind of stuff. And then I already have like, you know, other things that I want to do on top of that. So it's kind of like the, in the backseat, I guess. 
but I will say when you got so to transition to the other topic, sorry, I, I, I added two oh, unrelated fine. questions and the same thing. Uh, when you <laughs> came onto the scene and we were rooting for you, it was back before, I, th- I believe before Grandmasters, and, and they really focus on storylines yeah. and getting to know people, uh-huh. and you wanted to root for people more. I wouldn't say hey, Grandmasters, it was a little weird, but like I know when you came uh-huh. on the scene, I rooted for you. You just seemed like a happy, fun, jovial person, and you just were happy to be there. And not that you were just happy to be there. You weren't there to compete, but you were having fun doing it, which seemed different from a lot of other people. So what was it like being in the Masters Tour and and competing at that high of a level? Um, I mean, yeah, I feel like you were probably right in the assessment if I was kind of just, like, happy to be there. I mean, I did, like, you know, I still was there to compete and that kind of stuff, but, you know, I've only ever been in, like, Fresno. I've never even thought that I could go any other places. <laughs> so, yeah, whenever I go to these places, like, um, I always just try to, like, experience as much as I can just because, like, I don't know how often am I going to be able to go to, like, China or, like, you know, Amsterdam or Australia or stuff like that. So it was really, like, uh, I would say, like, maybe, like, a, a once-in-a-lifetime, like, you know, kind of thing it felt like. So it was, you know, there was a lot of pressure to try to do well. And I would say maybe, admittedly, I maybe did not, you know, do as much, you know, to try to do well, because like I was just, you know, in these places that I never thought like I would even be able to like, see, like, I come back here to, you know, Fresno, and I talk to people about like, whenever I've traveled, and everyone just like tripped out. They're like, Oh, my God, you've been to these all these places and all this. And then, yeah, so it's like, it gets really like, I don't know, it was, you know, an experience for me just because there is not a lot of people who really travel around here or can. Um, so yeah, I, I, I tried to get a lot out of it. That's kind of where, um, like, I guess my weight loss journey kind of started too. So in this kind of traveling that I did a lot, um, one of the bad things was I was... 440 pounds so like it was really hard to experience it to the fullest i guess so right now i always tell people like i don't really like traveling because of all this but it's not necessarily true it's more that when i was traveling as a bigger person it was just really hard so i feel like maybe if i you know lose more weight that i will try to do that as well but yeah i feel like i really just like was there a lot for more of like those experiences and meeting people and you know friendships and stuff like that (laughs) Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, so where'd you get your name? My name? Yeah. Um, so when I was like eight years old, um, there was like this huge pit in the back of my like backyard. And it was just like filled with this, like this huge ant colony. And yeah, when I was a kid, I kind of just like was a dumb kid. Like, oh, yeah, I won't, you, you won't jump in there. And... I was like, yeah, of course I will. And then I jumped in and then I got bit by a bunch of, okay, that's not real. My name is Anthony and I just shortened it to Ant. Uh, okay. I was going to say, pit, I was like, dang, that's a crazy story. Okay, the pit thing actually happened to Firebat because he always says he hates ants and something <laughs> like that, like where you got covered in ants or something like that. So that actually happened to Firebat and that's where I got that from. But uh, no, just my name is Anthony. I shortened it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what's your favorite class in Hearthstone? Um, that's probably a tough question. So my most played is Warlock. I have the most wins. And then now with like the deck tracker, you can see like your total games played and that kind of stuff. But yeah, Warlock is my most played. Uh, it was for the first deck I ever got to Legend with, or the first class I ever got to Legend with. First class I got Golden. Um, but my second and third highest like played as well are Shaman and Mage. And I just love, like, those two classes. I honestly probably love those two more than Warlock. Right now, I've been playing a lot more Mage. Um, But I think historically, it would probably be Shaman. Shaman has just been, like, a really fun class. It's also, it's funny, because, like, the first time that I got Golden Shaman, or not the first time, but, like, when I got Golden Shaman, I did it specifically specifically with the intention that I really wanted Golden Wrath of Air Totem. And it's just not in the game anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so I'll probably have to go with Shaman. Okay, so Shaman's your favorite class, but what's your favorite deck of all time? My favorite deck of all time? Um, it wasn't a good deck. So I remember there was, like, this deck that I used to play. It was, like, 
re like reincarnate. I'm not sure. It used to be like kill your guy, resummon it. And I used to play Wide Eyes, if you guys remember what that does. It yep. is a 5-5 five, five, and it shuffles the Storm Guardian into your deck when it dies. So I remember I would go like Wide Eyes, like Ancestral Spirit, and then like Reincarnate or something like that. It was something along those lines. I can't remember. So I would just get all these things back. And then I would play Nazoth, and then all these wide eyes would come back and put more ten tens into my deck. It was so Aww. fun to play. It was like a control shaman, but yeah, it was it was really fun. That that does sound like a fun time. Uh, so <laughs> this last question: uh, What is something that people might find surprising about you that you don't think that like people generally know? Hmm. People it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have me. to be super serious or personal. It can be something lighthearted <laughs> if you want. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh probably that i'm a massive like k-pop fan nice okay. I, I just love listening to k-pop <laughs> so you have a lot in common with um deck tech's wife now <laughs> yeah probably <laughs> it's probably for a reason you wouldn't think though it's just weird so i like listening to music when i'm like at my like desk doing something but a lot of times when i listen to like english lyrics the words bounce in my head and confuse me. So it's like their words mix up with my words and I can't think straight. So if I just can't understand the words, then it's a lot better. <laughs> it's fair. That's pretty cool. Before we move on to the main topic, um, you've mentioned that you were at 440 pounds and mm -hmm. that's, you know, a lot. Uh, but you've been on a recent journey lately. Uh, do you want to talk about mm -hmm. that a little bit? Uh, Sure. Yeah, I say like about a year and a half ago, um, I just kind of told myself that I have to lose weight. I'm not sure if it started like in middle of like COVID or something like that. Um, but I started thinking like I always started having like these really like irrational thoughts that I was going to die because of like my weight. Basically, I think it might have started because like in, in COVID, because I remember they were saying like, you know, people who are obese are more like um susceptible i guess and i think that's where like maybe my thought process started um but yeah i used to think like all the time like i was gonna die if i you know because of the weight that i am and then i was like okay well i mean i have to like try to do something about it because like there would be times where i would just like lay in my bed and just not not do anything because i felt like any exertion on my body was gonna like i was gonna have a heart attack and die so i i started like i was Again, that was like kind of the start of my watching anime. And I was like, okay, well, I'm, if I'm going to watch anime, I have to walk. So I just started watching anime while I walk. I, okay, actually, it started with Pokemon Go. I was like, okay, I want to get out and do something. So I started Pokemon Go. But yeah, and then nice. I was like, I don't want to go Pokemon Go. I want to watch the anime. I was like, wait, why don't you do them both at the same time? And then, yeah, that's kind of like where that started, where that's like what I do now. And now I'm down to like uh, 320. Three, yeah, so I've lost 120 pounds. Dude, just congrats. Like, <laughs> Thank that you. That is awesome. Yeah, I, I literally just walk around in circles in my backyard and watch anime. I mean, I recently you I've recently started trying to lose weight too because I've gone mm -hmm. I I've gone to see my doctor. We're mm -hmm. pre diabetic on medicines and and, mm -hmm. and for that and stuff. And it, the, there's nothing to be ashamed about when when we talk about yeah. these things. But the uh, a when you decide that hey you're going so it's so hard to decide hey i'm going to change my routines and change my lifestyle because yeah, that's what absolutely. it is like you can go on diets diets are bullshit diets mm -hmm. uh, i should probably mark that diets <laughs> are um you know they're they're fads they get you only so far but like when you decide to make a lifestyle change like you have i'm going to walk every day mm -hmm. i'm going to watch anime i'm going to whatever that's where it really matters and mm -hmm. I decided to do that when I, so I, I think everybody remembers I went to Disney about a month and a half ago and I haven't done a lot. Like I haven't started exercising much yet outside of my normal dog walks. And mm -hmm. I've, I've done simple things. Like I no longer put cream in my coffee. I eat salads for lunch. I eat an omelet in the morning and with no cheese and little things. And I'm almost, I'm almost to a weight I haven't seen in a long time. I've lost probably like 12 pounds, which is nothing compared to Jesus, 120 pounds. <laughs> but, you know, everybody's journey is different. And and I have found mm -hmm. what you have done very inspiring. So I hope you continue up with it. And 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 I hope you are happy and healthy. And, and, and don't die, please. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, I'll try my best. <laughs> but that, uh, that's I mean, good. 
But, and this is kind of an awkward trans- transition, but I'm kind of hungry, Doc. I think it's time <laughs> for the main course. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> we have a theme, we have a theme based podcast, so it just kind of goes along that route. So let's talk about <laughs> Titans a little bit. We had a couple mm-hmm. nerfs last week where we nerfed the what is it solid alibi and lab constructor. Yep. And those were kind mm-hmm. of I don't I wouldn't even say they were tyrants, but they were outliers that made some decks perform a little better than normal. People have been wanting to see a solid alibi nerf for a while. Makes sense. I would have preferred mm-hmm. if they would have made it so that way you can't discover it kind of like necrotic explosion, but uh-huh. it is what it is. Um what are your thoughts on the current state of the meta? Um, so the current state of the meta, I, I'm not sure. Like, I have mixed feelings about it. Um, a lot of the decks are kind of fun, but it does feel like I'm only playing against, like, Hunter, Mage, Shaman, um, and sometimes Demon Hunter. But, yeah, I just don't feel like it's as maybe, like, diverse, I guess. There's... But I don't feel like anything's, like too bad except for maybe shaman shaman like it might be just a little like too much like i was watching um ike if you guys are familiar with ike yep. hs the other day and just so many games i'd see him like turn five like all right i played flash of lightning the turn before all right feral spirits feral spirits you know, attack of my thing fire luminescence you know bolt you bolt you i'm like okay i mean he's gonna do this on turn five every game like this is crazy this is crazy so I, I would not be surprised if that something gets hit, especially because like it's something that like is really not fun to play against. Um, yeah, because I even see like Savitz tweeting all the time, like ah, oh, I'm gonna have to take a break. Like it's really unfun to play against like this deck. So yeah, I I can kind of see it. Um, I for a while I was playing against like only Hunter, and like I didn't mind it too much. The thing that it is about Hunter is. Hidden meaning just doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people. And I don't know if it needs it to be nerfed or anything, but like, it, I feel like that's just like a really confusing one to a lot of people. I feel like, why does the minion attack immediately is like something that I, I get a lot um, while I'm streaming. But yeah, it doesn't feel like it's that bad, but I do play it against it a lot. So maybe there's like something there that maybe needs to be touched. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I, Mage is another one that's really good. That's one that I like to play a lot. Um, I would say like the the alibi nerf that helped or didn't hurt that much. It's still like a pretty fine card, um, but yeah, it still feels like a fine deck. It's just like another one that kind of feels bad to play against because like they have like they can kill you from so much with like Sif and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I I'm not really sure because I like playing Mage. I think that's probably why I think it might be okay. But yeah, there might be some things that could be changing if anything i would like to see like buffs to other classes that aren't like played right now because they really just feel like it's like shaman mage hunter well do you like the shaman deck because you did say shaman basically is one of your favorite classes are you do you enjoy that play style or is it not really kind of fitting your vision of the class um so i like i, I think it's fine i think it's cool to do a bunch of damage in one turn i mean it's not that healthy for the game but it is fun for the person doing it. Um, but I haven't really played it too much, honestly. Um, from from what I hear, everyone always tells me it's like a, a mega mind deck. You have to be like, you know, a math major, you know, like you have a doctorate in mathematics or something to play the deck. <laughs> so I'm just like, eh, I'm just gonna play mage. Like I like, you know, generating random cards. <laughs> a lot of a lot of the times like those things are fun to me is like, you know, making random cards, you know, treating my opponent for a lot with sip you know, a lot later than turn five. <laughs> so we're talking about some powerful decks. Do you feel mm-hmm. like any of the particular decks like Shaman or Mage or Rogue or Hunter are warping the meta? Or do you feel like the meta is in a healthy place with the balance that we have and it just happens to be a little narrower than normal? Mm. So I would say the only thing that is maybe warping the meta is Shaman because they're just doesn't exist of like control decks there's not really control decks um in like legend ladder just because like they they can never be shaman there's no they they don't like need minions so dirty rat doesn't help so there just hasn't really been like control decks that could survive 
which again makes sense why Savis tweets the the stuff that he does because he likes playing control decks a lot. He's like a big control guy, and they just haven't really been um, something that existed. Uh, so I would say like yeah, shaman is probably something that's like warping the meta. Uh, there is one thing that I guess it's not necessarily a deck, and I don't even know if it's necessarily OP, but um, Reaver probably is just like I I'm not sure how I feel about the card. Just because, like, obviously it's a fun card to play with as the mage, but it feels like it kind of invalidates a lot of, like, the big minions that they've made, like, the marquee cards of, like, the sets, like, like Colossals and, like, uh, the Titans. And I, I don't think it's that good to nerf, but it, it just does make these cards feel bad, which kind of feels bad to me, because, like, you see tit Titans, and then you're like, oh, I want to play more Titans, and you queue into your mage, like, I can never play my Titan, because he's going to reaver it twice or something and get all the effects. And I don't know. Uh, that one's like some that's interesting, but I don't know if it's necessarily like that bad. I, I think Shaman is the only thing that's really like warping the meta right now. I think a lot of people's favorite interaction there is when people uh, reverb their um, Sargeras and try to interact with that and realize mm -hmm. that all they're doing is helping their the their opponents yeah. uh, twisting Nether and not their own. But yeah, all right. So. So okay, let's let, let's just say shaman is warping the meta, and hopefully they probably adjust that as we go. I don't know what mm -hmm. they. Ch we'll, well, we'll get to that in a minute. Well, let's not get ahead <laughs> of ourselves. Um, <laughs> do you feel like there's at least interesting archetypes for each class? Maybe they're not all performing as well, and they need some buffs or other classes to be nerfed. But do you feel like every class has something interesting to do, or are there some classes that have been kind of left behind? Um, let me see. For the most part, I would say, like, most of the things are interesting. I would say, like, the one that is probably the least interesting to me is Paladin. Because they, they pretty much sound just pure Paladin. Like, just like the aggro, you play your guys on curve, you play pure raider, that kind of stuff. Like, and I would, you know, I would hope that there was, like, some sort of different archetype for them. Um, because it feels like that's just been the case for a long time. They just play their guys on curve and hopefully, you know, they they curve out and win because they don't really have that much like interaction either. They have like a uh, class action lawyer, like to really interact. Like that's the only like sort of re really like removal they have, and it's always just like play curator and like win the game hopefully. Um, so yeah, that's like probably one of the ones I would say is like maybe one of the less interesting. Um, surprisingly, I feel like one of the more interesting one is like Odin Warrior. Like just Odin in general is such a cool like card. I didn't think it was going to be that good, and then I played with it. I'm like, man, you could kill some people from a lot of health, um, especially with, like, the, the one-mana quill board. It really helps you, like, you know, pile on the damage, it feels like. Um, but, yeah, that's just the one that is, like, a little bit too slow in the current meta. But that, that one, I feel like, is, like, super interesting. But, um, yeah, just off the top of my head, I would say, like, yeah, Paladin is the only one that comes to mind, like, for something that's not interesting. Warrior is missing just something because Odin mm -hmm. comes online too late, and if you don't draw Odin, you run out of problems, and you only have really Brawl, which is a 2014 card, to really control <laughs> the board. So when you had Shield Slam, and uh, when you had um, Buckler, and 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 the that whole clear from last year, that made uh -huh. a difference. But now you don't. So. I feel like Sh Warrior is just missing a little bit of early game. Mm -hmm. And if you yeah, can get absolutely. there, Odin is a fantastic uh, over-the-top uh, power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's it just like their board clears are a little weak. Like you said, a Brawl, a 2014 card is like the best board clear. Like they have Bouncing Blade, and, but like it, I feel like that's just like one that's like super easy to play around and like kind of know what, it, when it's coming. I feel like maybe some people are like not playing the like the music weapon, the you know improves with armor, the whirlwind, but it also just might be too slow. So yeah, they just need like a little bit of a better like board clear maybe, and it could be really good. And you mentioned Paladin being a little boring. What do mm. you think about the transition from secrets to auras? Because when you get the auras going in a pure Paladin or say like a Mech Paladin. It can be really powerful, and it definitely mm -hmm. is swingy and snowbally. But it you it requires you having a board, sticking a board, 
and then playing your aura and then being able to continue to have a board. So what do you think about the direction they're taking Paladin? Yeah, I think it's really interesting. Um, I feel like the the secrets never really like made sense to me in Paladin because they're one mana. So they can't be like super powerful because when they are, then it kind of just feels like oppressive because a lot of times they'll just go into like an aggro deck. Um, so I kind of like the auras. I think it's a, like a cooler idea, like just something that stays around for a little while. Um, it's not, you know, a kind of effect that I feel like we see like super often. So yeah, I think it's like probably a good direction um, for for the class to go. All right. Hopefully it goes a little faster than the overheal does in Priest. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about the meta, the current state. Shaman's a little warping. Mage is kind of powerful. It's limiting scope. What nerfs would you like to see in the next uh, couple? Like, we have a, probably a nerf patch next week or the week after. What would you like to uh-huh. see nerfed to open up space in the meta? Um, so I feel like for there to exist, like, a control deck, Shaman has to be nerfed. The... Like, there is, like, a, the problem of, like, would control decks just, like, you know, overpower the meta? Um, it can kind of, like, maybe be something to think about. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, like, I'm not sure in Shaman what we do. Like, I'm not sure if, like, you, like, up by Luminescence, is the deck still playable? Um, like, are you still able to, like, OTK people, that kind of stuff? So, it's probably something along those lines. Uh, I, I saw it, like, it's really like something that's crazy and wild right isn't there like some some like uh something like that like nature shaman um like spell shaman that kills people pretty fast um so yeah something like that could could help like that archetype as well like get toned down uh but so yeah for shaman i would probably say like bioluminescence or like um the one that reduces for every nature spell I, i don't remember the name but that one I feel like uh, I see a lot thunder. too. Crash, crash of thunder. Yeah, there you go. That one I see a lot too. Where like you know they spend their their turn like playing all their nature spells, getting their bolts, like the lightning reflexes and stuff, and then you know now you have like a bunch of zero mana, you know deal tens that kind of thing. So I, I could see that one maybe um, for shaman. Uh, for mage, I would say it it might just be reverb because I don't feel like the deck is like too um, overpowered. I would say maybe just like reverb. Um, just because it makes like the fun cards from every set less fun. Um, well, it makes it fun for the mage who gets to play your titan against you. Yeah, exactly for three mana, and it just pings your though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I-, I would say maybe just reverb for mage as as a mage player. Um, let me see, hunter, hunter. I'm not sure that one's. I've thought a lot about, and I feel like. Well, okay, besides hidden meaning, hidden meaning probably needs to not attack immediately. One, because it doesn't make sense, and two, because it, you know, puts, like, way too much pressure on you. But, um, I actually thought, like, um, Selective Breeder. Like, I, I kind of like, like, maybe a nerf to Selective Breeder, just because, like, I feel like the, the 35, or, yeah, the 40 card like, hunters are super consistent, and just because their decks have, you know, four, like, basically plus two of any beast they want, um, and I could see, like, you know, trying to hurt, like, the consistency of the deck would be something that might, you know, tone it down a little bit. Um, but at least that's, like, what I would think. Uh, well, what about... So, Hunter has two decks right now, right? They have Big Beast mm-hmm. Hunter, and, yeah. or uh, Hound Hunter, and they have Secret Hunter. And uh-huh. the the overlap there is Costume Singer and probably um, Hidden Meaning. So, you already mentioned Hidden Meaning, but do you think Costume Singer also needs to be hit a little bit? Um, I mean, I guess I'm thinking about it from like a. Actually, it's not that old. Honestly, I feel like it's like super rare for them to nerf new cards. But yeah, Costume Singer isn't isn't new anymore. It's on the table. So, um, yeah, I I could see it. like it's super strong, right? It draws at the end of your turn. Like all those effects have always been like super strong. So, I, I it wouldn't even surprise me if it did like the the Nat Pagel where like you know draw at the start of your next turn. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is one where like. It just feels so bad when they play it, especially as like when I'm mage. I'm like, oh my god, I have to go coin ping now because it feels so bad whenever they do it. So I never really thought about it, but yeah, I, I could see that, yeah, as being something to hit. Because if you nerf, if as far as I understand it, uh, one of the biggest counters to Secret Hunter is the Big Beast Hunter, 
And if you nerf the big beast hunter, secret hunter is going to become that much more powerful. So you probably want to try to mm. rein both of those in with as minimal effort as possible. And, and costume singer to me seems like it'd be a costume singer and in a meeting seem like two of the cards that are played in both decks. There's not a whole lot of overlap, but those do overlap. So I'm, I'm thinking that might be a, a good opportunity to explore. But let me ask you this. So mm-hmm. let's say we see nerfs to shaman mage and hunter in the next expansion mm-hmm. we have no idea what's coming right you might have a little mm-hmm. bit i don't know if you're in the creator program or not but let's say you uh we see those three nerfed a, f- a few months ago i started playing shadow priest because zacko and vicious syndicate and everything said when x y and z gets nerfed shadow priest is going to be what kind of rises to the top uh-huh. So I started learning Shadow Priest before the nerfs, and then when the nerfs hit, I I, I played like a thousand games of Shadow Priest, <laughs> did really well. So, what would you tell our listeners? They should probably start working a class on now if they want it to be a class that they can take to a higher level after whatever perspective nerf. Assuming that Hunter, Shaman, and Mage get nerfs. What is a good deck to start working on now to be taking that advantage of those nerfs in the future? Um, honestly, I I can't really see like too much they would nerf from Mage. Like I would feel like Mage would still be a pretty good deck to like play. Um, something that's not like maybe popular right now, like you know, the Tree and Druids is like that one is Shaman is like its worst matchup, and that one might be like a lot better if like Shaman gets nerfed. So that's like probably one. Any of those like kind of minion based decks, like the board board uh, like centric decks, um, yeah, like Tree and Druid, maybe even, maybe even like Pure Paladin too. Like it, they're still like you know fringe playable. I still see them in top legend sometimes, but not as much as the others. So yeah, I could see those. Um, I want to say nothing has really changed from like the old Outcast DH that when used to be like one of the best decks in the game. So I mean that's also another one. Also, I've never played a, though I've never played a game of Demon Hunter in my life, so I wouldn't advocate for others to do it. <laughs> but yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I'm I would lean towards like Tree and Druid. It seems like some one that could be like pretty good. Um, okay, well, Draco Cat, you've been called out. Uh, <laughs> so, what cards would you like to? What cards would you like to see buffed to improve some other classes? Um. Yeah, I don't know. I've not thought about like individual cards. <laughs> maybe, maybe classes or archetypes. Um, I guess it's not really like I would like to see like in the mini set something interesting for Paladin. But yeah, I, I for like nerfs, nerfs, buffs, um, just something in like Warrior. Um, maybe like their weapon that like AOEs. Maybe like a a, a mana less or something. Like just something that can help them like sustain or like you know. Be on the board uh could be something especially if like shaman gets nerfed because that's like something they could probably be like pretty bad against and if had, they have like a good aoe like maybe the weapon where they can you know charge it up with their armor cards maybe a turn earlier uh, could be something that could be okay so yeah i would i would like to see like warrior um but i feel like it's something that like for a long time it was every patch like please nerf warrior please or not nerf please you know buff warrior please buff warrior and i feel like we're kind of still there. I, I, I'm not sure if like the core set that they kind of provided for Warrior really helps it excel. Um, yeah, I, again, like I would have to be Warrior. Um, there's a tricky one, because I did play a lot of like Thaddeus Warlock too, like the undead stuff. And that deck is really fun. The problem is like, if it is ever really good, it's just going to be kind of like oppressive and kind of obnoxious to play against. You're like, okay, well, they went slime. They have Thaddeus, and now they played their entire hand, and there's no possible way I could win this game. So that's one that I would wish it could be, you know, a lot better, but if it is, it might just be, like, oppressive, like, too much to deal with. I got some bad news for you. It's already obnoxious to play against. <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, I can't argue with that one. <laughs> All right. So you've been known to create some innovative decks and often on like shows like coin conceit or on Twitter, people say, Hey, this is an ant deck. So what is Mm -hmm. your 
deck building process? Do you iterate on decks that are out there? Do you build some from scratch? What do you do to make your put your name out there as, hey, I built this deck and this is mine and you should try it? Um, yeah, for the most part, I kind of just like try to improve upon like things that are out there um, for the most part. Just because like starting from scratch is like really hard, you know, that takes a lot of work. And I really like commend people who do that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I kind of just like taking decks and maybe like refining them, changing cards and trying to have like success with them there. Um, because there could be like, you know, it, it's really hard to like take like a fresh deck, a fresh idea and then just like refine, a, refine upon it. And then also not get emotional about it because you'll play like you'll play your deck and it's usually pretty good. And then you play against like this one, um, let's say just like igneous you know some some like something like that maybe they beat you with like weapons you're like okay i'm jamming double snake into my deck and i don't i don't care i want to i want to make sure i beat this deck and then like you start playing against other decks and you're like oh my god well these cards suck i don't want to play these anymore so it, it, <laughs> it's really it's really hard to not get like let your emotions get the best of you when you're doing those kind of things as well um and it, it's happened to me a lot of times but yeah I, I i you know for the most part like improving uh, improving upon things that could be like interesting especially because like if i play like a you know high legend i feel like a lot of people um have like their okay this is like the meta here and then if i just saw like because there was a while where i got like pretty high rank with like enrage warrior and i remember seeing an enrage warrior list and i think i changed like a few cards and then was able to like climb up to like i think i climbed to like 30 or something like that and yeah it just like sometimes a few cards can really help you a lot and then there's just like Sometimes these metas where people expect certain decks and then you play this one that's like out of nowhere. And they're like, I have no idea how to mulligan for this. I don't know what to expect. Uh, yeah, and it happens a lot. So this is a bit of a side. This is not a question I prepped you for. Mm. What does it feel like to be a known quantity in Hearthstone? Because I know you played against uh, one of my friends and mods, Pilot, the other day. And you wiped uh -huh. the floor with him. And he's like, oh, yeah, why <laughs> Ant kicked my ass. <laughs> what does it feel like to be a, a kind of a, a personality in a space that people know, oh, it's Ant? Hmm. What is that like? Um, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> I, I guess I, I don't think about it too much. Um, it's just like, I don't know. I, I can't, it's like, I feel like I'm in my little like world, especially when I'm like streaming and stuff like that, that... I mean, I feel like the people who are there know me. And then when people like outside of my community kind of like talk about me or, you know, like, like you said, where like I was mentioned on like a VS podcast and with that, you're like, oh, they're talking about you. And it's just like, talk about me. why? Like, I'm just like some <laughs> dude playing some games on ladder, like streaming or something. So I don't know. It's still something that just doesn't feel like, like it just, it still kind of just like feels weird or like, you know, it's just not something I've really got used to. Maybe other people do, but yeah, like because even like I remember my friend, um, he commutes for work, so he works um in like Northern California, and he plays at a like magic store up there. And then he's he's heard some people talking about Hearthstone. He's like, oh, do you guys know Ant? And then like, oh yeah, I know him. He was like this. Yeah, oh yeah, he's my roommate. And they're like, oh no way. <laughs> and then he'll tell, come back and tell me that story. I'm like, what? Really? The hell? That's so crazy. Um. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's just a, it's a interesting feeling. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Uh, and we are all big fans here. We were very excited you. that you Thank were able you. to join us. Yes. Um. So, <laughs> do you have any final thoughts on Titans? And do you think Team Five hit or miss with the set? Hmm. So, I think like outside of like maybe the shaman stuff, I think it's pretty much a hit. The thing that I would want to say. Was, is actually like one of the best things that's been going on is actually like the balance. I feel like the balance team is doing just a great job because we have such a good release of this set. If you remember, like a lot of people were just tweeting like, oh, this is the most fun I've had of a set in a long time. But if you remember, like the set was, or like the, the meta was really balanced right before Titans released. So like this whole past, like, you know, um, from like the mini set i can't remember if there was like some nerfs after that but there's a point where like okay the meta is really balanced and the deck the game is like really fun to play and it actually just stayed like that for a really long time 
And even before Titans, like it was still really balanced. So when Titans released, we have a balanced meta. So like, you know, all these people were trying all these different decks and nothing really felt like it was like super OP. Even the decks that were like performing a little bit better, you know, still could lose, it felt like. So I would feel like, yes, the set was like a pretty good um, in regards to like, you know, the set releasing and everything and um, that kind of thing. Yeah, except for maybe like the, the stuff with Shaman, but yeah, in general, I feel like the balance team just did a really good job up until the Titans release. And then with Titan release, it was just, you know, made the release even more fun. Like I, was, I had so many friends like, oh, I'm going to try it. Like it looks actually really fun. The problem with the balance meta, there, there are mm-hmm. problems with the balance meta. People think they okay. want a balance meta. They don't <laughs> because some people do. When, when, when you are an expert player like Ant, balance meta is great because there's a lot of variety. Although you said that we are kind of limited in the cards, that the, the decks that have come out of that because there's been Shaman, Mage, Hunter, maybe a little bit of um, Demon Hunter, maybe a little bit of DK. But when it's balanced, then everything is around 50%, and then it's really hard to climb for the average. So if you don't have that powerful deck that you can climb with, it becomes problematic, and then it feels like a slog, and people say, oh, this meta sucks. But I, I really think they've done a fantastic job with the meta. Can I can I just speak for the average Hearthstone Andes? Um, yeah, I think we lost Ant for a second. Hold yeah. On. So, I mean, I'm just going to vamp. Uh, okay. So for yeah, the sorry, average Hearthstone... Ha- oh, you're good, man. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. So for the average Hearthstone player, I feel like if they don't feel like they're playing something that's powerful right now in this current meta, if you have Drum Circle mm-hmm. Druid, play that. Like, because I was playing like Shock Spitter Hunter and stuff, and like that was fine. And then just Drum Circle Druid just feels like it's such a spiky deck. And if that's the kind of Hearthstone you enjoy, then that's the deck I'd recommend for people that want to feel like they're doing something slightly degenerate uh, if they don't <laughs> think anything else works for them in the current meta. That's fair. Well, Doc, I don't know about you, but I'm, that was a lot of information. I'm feeling <laughs> a little bit full. I think it's time for some dessert, though. I always have room for dessert. What do you think? Yeah, dessert sounds good. So, listeners, please leave us a review. It helps us out with visibility because uh, we are a newer show and there's a lot of there's a lot of podcasts out there. And Apple Podcast does not do a great job with helping new shows get found. Uh, so reviews are really appreciated. Uh, and we have one final question. Or, yeah, we have one final question for you. What is your favorite dessert? Uh, nice sledges cake. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but yep. yeah. <laughs> my favorite thing in the world. Every birthday, that's my cake. Excellent choice. Uh, so, okay, sorry. I kind of lied about the final question thing. Uh, mm-hmm. but <laughs> where can people find you, uh, on social media? <laughs> okay. So, uh, twitch.tv slash anti Uh, is it x.com? Is it still Twitter? Same thing. Whatever. Same uh, thing. same thing. And <laughs> Ant- underscore HS. Uh, also like the, you know, the weight loss, you know, anime stuff, uh, TikTok. My that one's, uh, Ant is taken. Please help. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. That, that's all I got. Hey, Tito, how about, how about yourself? yourself, Doc? <laughs> oh, <laughs> bad timing. Doc, you go. Yeah, uh, you can find me on Twitter and sometimes Twitch at Doc McButt. And you can find me at Tito Santana HS on Twitter and Twitch. And by the way, Elon Musk can eat a bag of Richards. Um, <laughs> and would you like to shout out anybody this week? Shout out anybody? Um Yeah. Shout out my boy, Monkey D. Luffy. Nice. Yeah, there you go. Rubber man. <laughs> How about yourself, Doc? Uh, yeah, uh, as always, uh, Ant, thank you so much for being on our show. Uh, it means a lot that you take the time out of your day to be on our show for the time that mm-hmm. we have you. So it's just really appreciated. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. And yeah, it's been a great time. Uh, Tito, how about yourself? I have a few. Obviously, Ant, thank you so much for uh, mm-hmm. coming back. I know you kind of adjusted things to be here, so we really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Also, on that note, I'd like to thank Doc's brother, who was supposed to be on the episode tonight. And then we had to bump him because, well, we had Ant. So uh, <laughs> he is going to be on the show. I'm very excited about the episode. We're going to have we have some fun with Doc's brother. You've heard about him multiple times over the last year. He's going to be here. 
So we're looking forward to that. But thank you for being very gracious in the fact that we had to move you for another guest. Um, I'd like to thank Past Hat because Past Hat gave me the information about these um, filters or these presets I could use for recording the episodes or for editing the episodes. And everything I understand, the last episode we had with Dragon Rider was much, much better as far as balance and volume and everything. So thank you, Pat's Hat, for giving me that information. I'm sorry I didn't listen to it sooner. <laughs> and finally, thank you to Born to be Wild, especially uh, Electric, Sheep. <laughs> but Electric Sheep City. I did that on the show, too. Who <laughs> invited me onto their show. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoy those guys. They have a they have an energy about them. It, it was a lot of fun. But anyway, I don't know, Doc. I think that's it for us. I think we're toast. I'll see you. Bye bye. Bye. Slide two brothers meet one another when they slide up to the mic. It's bread and butter with one another. Let's start up that recording light. <laughs> <laughs>